Hello there Capricorns, I hope you all are doing well. I feel like for many of you, releasing old demons, releasing old karma, and walking into a new phase in your life, starting something over, starting something new, I feel like those energies are very indicative in this card, okay? So, uh, it's going to be a really, really good month, and I feel like you're getting some type of revelation, you're getting some type of like... Um, you can call it psychic hits, if you will. Um, what I feel is like revelations, premonition, or even uh, um, a holistic understanding of a situation and knowing how it has affected you in the past so that you can vow to yourself to not let it affect you in the future. So I feel like this spread is bringing about a breath of fresh air for many, many, many of you, okay? Um, when I was shuffling out this card, uh, this spread, what I saw was, um, I saw like a scarecrow. I saw a scarecrow. So um, there's this road, right? And there's this um, big mansion. It's like a, a white marbled mansion, really beautiful place. And then this scarecrow, he's got like a little bag on a stick, very similar to this. And um, he's walking away from the mansion towards the road. He's got like a smile on his face. And uh, you can see his clothes are in tather. He's got pieces of hay. And he's also like, um, he's got like those strings that have been cut, like marionette strings, you know, like a puppet on a string. But they've been cut, which allows him to kind of move away from the mansion where he's been sequestering himself or he was either forced to work for somebody under somebody else's mandates. Um, and he felt like he didn't have a sense of agency. But now that those strings are all cut he's starting on a new path in his life where he has like total um freedom to you know exercise his free will to do whatever he wants and he has like total control and that sense of agency about his future okay so i feel like it's a very powerful moment uh and imagery mainly because it signals you know how uh you guys your card is um is the devil right and the devil is being tied to situations being stuck in a prison of our own making or being stuck in a situation where we can't really see the way out however this is like running counter to that because it indicates you're finally free from a burdensome situation you're finally walking down a new path and you're finally happy like i'm very um drawn to that smile on his face as he's going about his own way and you know feeling that sense of freedom for the very first time um the key words i'm getting from that imagery is like indenture servitude i'm getting as well you know revelation i'm getting as well freedom overall um and i'm drawn to use imagery and even words that are indicative of a of, of a situation that could be um it might seem a little bit archaic these terms but i feel like you know they're coming up for a reason so i'm going to use them i feel like there's a regime change okay um moving from one very very oppressive regime or like getting out from under a very oppressive situation and then charting a new territory and the reason why I say this is we have here the Hierophant. This is like a situation where uh, somebody has to give uh, a part of their harvest, a part of themselves, a part of whatever money they make, paying tribute to somebody who has that sense of entitlement. Like, um, you know, they're they're either ruling over you and they're like, OK, you want to you have to do it this way and only exactly this way. Or you have to, you know, on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis, pay your tribute to another person. And that was just the way things were. That was like the, the rule of the land or that was like the law of the land. And no one dared to um, question it, okay? So like somebody is taking, I feel like either your energy, your financial resources, and you felt like this was the only way to do things okay you never question the established order the hierophant is greatly about institutions long-standing in institutions that have been in place for a very very long time they're very rigid very resistant to change and because they've been around for so long they might not be relevant in present time but people don't question it because 
it's thought of as you know this is the way things are and this is the way we've been doing them for hundreds and hundreds of years and this is the way things are going to be so no one dare to really question it okay but it creates i feel a very oppressive um atmosphere and it creates almost like a, a an unfair sense of balance when it comes to um I almost feel like the poor giving to the rich and I almost feel like you know whoever's on top is exploiting the situation and exploiting the fact that others have to pay homage or have to pay tribute out of their own pockets in order to gratify somebody else on top and so it creates a situation where things are very very unbalanced and if we're not talking about this in terms of you know financial resources we're talking about energy we're st talking about you know spiritually you're very drained okay this was a very oppressive system whoever is writing you whoever is like um um ordering you around or i also feel like who whoever has been i'm sensing um you're working under even and then i'm also sensing as well family obligations okay and i'm also sensing like expectations from people just because um by virtue of being your family they feel like they have the right to you know um, dip into your financial resources so i definitely feel in a way uh you guys might have been subsidizing a situation that really drained you financially emotionally spiritually you were not happy you were not happy and you were trying to find a way out, okay? How do I maintain this? So if you're, we're looking at, this is the Four of Pentacles. If we're looking at it in the traditional Rider Waite deck, it's the guy holding the pentacles, one on his head, two on the floor, and then two on his hands, right? He's grasping and trying to protect everything that is his. And he's looking at this mountain and he's like, I want to get on top of that mountain. But at the same time, I want to carry all of these resources with me. I want to carry all of these things that matter to me with me. How do I do that without, you know, um, be, how, do, how do I successfully do that? Because if you look at all that overgrowth, right? And if you're trekking through the forest trying to get to the mountaintop, you're going to need your hands and your feet to be free so that you can pull yourself up if you happen to fall so that you can grasp at branches and trees to kind of like help you hoist yourself up to the top of the mountain and you're not able to do that because you're holding on to earthly things and I feel like this is a situation you've been pondering for quite some time you know I want to get on top of the mountain and what is really holding me back what is really preventing me from making that move what is really you know stopping me from taking that first step so you've been thinking about this for a, a long while trying to trek to the mountain but you're not really making any strides and i feel like what's preventing you or what's really hindering your path was this this is the nine of swords okay this is sleepless nights uh, getting nightmares, uh, overthinking, overanalyzing situations, but I also think of this card as like constantly thinking about worst case scenario, dwelling on the negatives, and you know the the um, the negative thought patterns. A lot of the times they turn into self fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so it, it's sort of like you're in your head thinking about how do I successfully get on top of that mountain. And rather than thinking about and focusing on logically, step one, I need to do this. Step two, I need to do that. Step three, I need to, you know, formulate some type of plan. And I feel like for many of you, this process, this is like a lot of thoughts, okay? Each sword stands for like a, a mental uh, thought. And I feel like for many of you, you've been mired in this situation where your demons are getting the best of you. You're thinking about problems rather than separating. Each problem exists in its own little bubble. But rather than, than thinking, you know, some of these problems are outside of my control, some of them are not, and, and the ones that are not outside of my control, I really should focus on that. I feel like you're conflating or you're mixing and uh, mixing all these problems together and they become this really embedded, right? This sense of embeddedness. All stuck together, all causing you a lot of anxiety, all seem very, very daunting. It's like... How do I get to the top of the mountain when I'm only at the base? 
And so as soon as you, you know, you feel inspired, you're like, I'm going to do it today. Something happens to hold you back. And a lot of it is these, you know, self-limiting thoughts and beliefs and, and thought patterns. And I feel like you are making mountains out of molehills. You're making a situation a lot more daunting than it has to be, mainly because you're not looking at problems in isolation. And what I mean by that is, let's say, first of all, you have a big plan that you want to get off the ground, right? The first thing that people logically that we should do is think about how much overhead costs or how much cost, you know, is associated with this. So that means you might need to do some preliminary research to figure out what your budget is and how much this project is going to cost. Okay. And then you're going to go out and kind of brain, you know, crowdsource, brainstorm from other people and figure out hearing from experts or getting advice, you know, to, to get a price range of how much of this is going to cost, uh, who I should talk to to get this off the ground. So each of those steps need to exist in isolation. And, and I feel like you're jumping the gun. You want to get to the top, but you're not thinking about each of the steps that are necessary in order to get there. So I feel for some of you, um, there's a situation here that it seems like it's, it's running ahead of you. And it's, it's like the, the longer you wait, the further and further and further away it is from you. It's, it's almost like you're losing your grasp. You can't really get it back. You can't really draw it back into your orbit because it's distancing itself. Okay. So I also feel like for some of you, this is a person, okay, who might be distancing themselves. And I also feel like um, there's a lot of guilt associated with the, the relationship between you and this person. For some of you, it could be a family uh, relationship. For others, it could be like um, a love type of a relationship. And I feel like it's, it's escaping your grasp. And I also feel there's a lot of guilt associated with it. Like I should have done things differently. I should have done, uh, I should have told them how I felt. I should have, you know, um, I should have given them the time of day or I should have, you know, done things just differently. I should have invested more time, more emotions into that. I should have let them know how I feel. I should have been upfront and honest with them. And I feel like, you know, they're, they're escaping your orbit. Okay. So I, I definitely feel like there's some guilt associated with it. Going back to your main uh, storyline, what I do sense here is there is a huge, this is like impetus, this is drive, ambition, okay? We have here the King of Wands, and this usually indicates somebody who's like in charge of their domain. He's scanning the horizon, looking out at the abundance that he has created for not only his empire, for himself, but for all the people that he rules, okay? This is someone who's very, very responsible. Um, the way I'm reading this energy is that you're in a great, powerful position of leadership, okay? You care about the people that have been very loyal to you. You care about their well-being. And I feel like it's almost like ruling with a very benevolent hand, okay? Understanding that I'm not going to exploit this power differential. If you do well, I do well, and our kingdom is going to do well. So understanding that even if others pay tribute to you, you can't exploit that relationship. You can't exploit the power differential to keep them oppressed. You have to kind of like uh, take care of the people that are under you. And I feel like many of you, uh, you're coming into a profound sense of, um, it's like understanding how power needs to be controlled there was a situation here where someone in a position of power was very um, tyrannical, controlling, and exploited that power of position. And we're shifting away from that into a new way of doing, a, like a paradigm shift, where someone in a position of power is very benevolent, okay? They can be hard if they want to because, because the King of Wands is very much uh, authoritative. Okay, but 
this person is also very paternal. They take care of people. They're very loyal to their subjects. And because of that, they garner a lot of respect and trust from their subjects. They're seen as someone who is not afraid to get their hands dirty if push comes to shove. And they're seen as someone who, you know, is constantly very vigilant, sees all, resolves problems and really really care about the well-being of other people so i feel like you're understanding how power is to be used rather than abused you're understanding as well that you know taking care of the people that matter to you or the people that have been very very loyal to you treasuring valuing and being available to those people means a lot more to you now and what's on top of this card here is the six of pentacles and the Six of Pentacles is, this is a major, major card about karma, okay? This is a situation where the poor is paying tribute to the rich to the point where they're financially, emotionally depleted, okay? Giving to a situation where you're no longer taking care of yourself. You're just going to work. You're just getting through life in order to have the resources to pay that tribute and now we're coming into this sense of like total rebalancing of karma the karmic scale things being done the right way okay this is like giving back to the community giving back to others giving to others who are less fortunate and this is also um it comes with a paradigm shift where we're understanding the importance and the necessity of you know being in a, a being a benevolent ruler you can still rule with an iron fist but you can still be loving and warm and gentle and benevolent and you can also you know give back to the people especially that really need it for many of you um, I'm seeing major career changes here some of you might be in that corporate environment and you're just like no this is too taxing too stale I'm already at the top and I don't like the vibe I don't like the atmosphere I don't like the the um, the environment where um, it's like a, a, a social you know like the 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 um, climbing that corporate ladder getting yourself to the top and once you've made it to the top and you have this bird's eye view and you're just like this is not really jiving with me this is not where i want to be and this is not something that i want to do long term and so i'm seeing a major career path a major shift where you are possibly working more at the grassroots level and thinking about what you need to do long term and what you need to kind of um what you need ultimately to be happy and so I'm seeing some of you thinking about major change in your career major parent um, a major shift of focus when it comes to like how do you yield power how a good leader is supposed to rule how to be a good supervisor how to be a good leader how to you know inspire others rather than like oppress others okay so this is really cool um, you know Capricorns um, are oftentimes like seen as people who are like um, who are very like um, career ladder oriented and they're seen as people who will throw other people under the bus if and I've heard this okay and this is uh, not something that I believe about you guys Capricorn but I feel like in the spirit of you know ambition like in, in the pursuit for power and wealth and prestige we're all capable of throwing another under the bus in order to get what we want and I feel like you know being that um, being that goat on the crevices of, of mountains and you know you never falter you jump from one small crevice to the next and you always land on your feet and you know how to do it well and you know how to do it very very uh, stealthily and very you know successfully but I feel like um, once you get to the top of the mountain you're just like oh that's it I'm already here and you're looking for the next mountain to conquer and I feel like there needs to be a little bit of a paradigm shift regarding, you know, what is the ultimate end goal? Is it just to prove to myself that I can conquer mountain after mountain? Or is it, you know, or, or should there be more of a humanitarian slant to the work that I'm doing? Trying to help others, trying to, you know, um, once you're on top of that mountain, I feel like you're in the best position 
to tell other people what the view from that mountain looks like, okay? And you're able to tell others, I've been there and here's what I learned. And here is how you can, you know, get there because I've been there. And here are the things that you should avoid. And I know this because I'm speaking from personal experience. So I feel like you have a wealth of experience and knowledge because you have already been there and done that. But for some reason in the past, you might not have shared this technique with other people. So we're moving into this month where you are becoming a lot more generous, where you are sharing your, your hard earned lessons. You're sharing it with other people to save them from having to do the legwork, to save them from having to reinvent the wheel. And I feel like in the past you might have shared it, but in a very Capricornian, you know, um, like a man of few words type of way you should do it like this but i feel like you have to soften that approach a little bit and tell others hey i'm telling you to do this because i've done it okay i've been there i've done everything that you have done and it didn't really work out and here here are the reasons why and i've done it this other way and it worked out in half the time and so framing it like that to allow others to understand that you're not just speaking from, you know, you're not just talking to talk. You're talking with skills and expertise and years of experience backing up everything that you say. And I feel like that's going to save somebody, you know, a lot of legwork. They don't have to reinvent the wheels. They can work off of what you're working off of, okay? I do feel for many of you, there is a situation here in your life, um, a very long standing relationship that might have gone a little bit sour. Okay. And um, we have a situation here where there was a vow, there was a promise. Okay. And the promise was kind of like to death do us part. Okay. The promise was for partnership longevity. For some of you, this could be somebody that you know, you have known for a really long time. They know your family. You've took them around to introduce them to your family. They've taken you around to introduce your um, you to their family, vice versa. This is a partnership where two people might have known each other since childhood. There is there is a tremendous um, degree of like trust. Okay, you know this person inside and out, and you trust this per person wholeheartedly. They likewise know you inside and out. And I, then I also feel like there's a, a immense sense of like trust love respect and you know the the whole nine yards like that whole ball of um it's like all the reasons that you have for caring about this person for trusting them everything is so like um embedded okay like the shared experience the share um ambition the shared uh dreams like the the two of you feel almost as if you have been through so much together there might have been a recent breach in trust there might have been a situation where i feel capricorn somebody is either living with a lot of guilt it could be you it could be them over something that was done okay and I feel like it it sort of like, you know, th there are so many reasons why the other person trusts you and you trust the other person. But at the same time, one unexpected move, one action that is done out of character can really make you or the other person distrust the, the future, the viability and the continuity of this friendship, this business relationship or this relationship. So I feel almost like there was something that was done in poor taste, in poor judgment, and it left like a bitter taste in somebody's mouth, okay? And, and things can never go back to, to the way they were. It's like everything that was said was said. You can't take back words. It's like, you know, the, the, the water from the chalice, from the cups have been spilled. And the other person might be the one walking away and they're just like i don't want to fix it you know it's already spilled i'm not going to go downstream two miles away to refill those cups i'm not going to trek up the mountain to the the clearest spring to fill up those goblets okay so i feel like there was a situation where it can be fixed but somebody you or the other person is is like i wash my hands of this um, I'm, I'm not putting any more time in it and I feel like it's leaving the other party 
very, very, um, very sad, very upset. And it's also this sense of overwhelming acceptance, okay? Like, oh, it could be fixed. They just didn't want to. And I feel like that says a lot, okay? But I feel in the wake of this, in the wake of this, people leaving so new adventures can await for you so that new boats, new ships, new people can be coming into the picture. And so while this has happened, and it's not something that you want to happen because you guys are very very um i almost feel like you're um scorpionic in the way that you value relationships especially uh relationships with people that you have known your whole life okay you are a clinger as well to um friends lovers past relationships where you really really know the other person okay that sense of like um being comfortable with the familiar okay i feel like a, a lot of people are in general but i feel like it, it's more so with scorpios i feel like scorpios leo um cancers and then i'm seeing that here with you guys and what that denotes to me is out with the old in with the new and i feel like i i feel like there's a situation here where you kind of have to reassess you know just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's best for me okay because there are whole lands to conquer there are whole territories and new areas that i can you know um explore and so wanting to i feel like lay the past to rest and just starting your life over i feel like that's going to be tremendously um, it's it's going to bring a lot more prosperity for you so you end up with the two best cards in the deck okay we have the fool and the fool this is the imagery that came up earlier and it basically denotes you know no longer being tied to something no longer being bound in a situation that's not good for us and embarking on a new journey towards something new and I feel for many of you um, I once again I'm seeing that white marble mansion and the marinette or the scarecrow is walking away from it so I feel like there was a situation where it was comfortable it was cushy it, it might have even been safe you know a marbled house people can shoot people can throw stones but you're locked inside that marbled mansion and there's enough space to roam but the, the marble mansion can also be like an imagery of like that ivory tower. Somebody who like learns things um, in a very intellectual way, but they were never given an opportunity to really put theory into practice. And I feel like you're finally breaking free from that ivory tower or that ivory marble mansion. You're no longer living in that, that sense of like comfort and familiarity you are exploring branching out putting out fires i feel you know there's that volcano in the background so it denotes to me like being in a situation where you are putting out fires you're on to more exciting things and you're taking everything that you have learned from the past and i feel you're in a position where you're teaching people you're telling people here's what i did it happened to me once here's what i did and how i got out of it and I also feel drawing from past experiences, rewarding those who have been very, very loyal to you and being available for people that are available to you, that make time for you, that have been really good to you. And then I'm sensing as well, you know, um, I'm getting a lot of ancestral karma coming through, okay? And I feel like, you know, spiritual guidance, especially from uh, grandparents that have passed on, I feel like, I feel like there might have been a situation here where it, it's, it's almost like being in a in a house like like being in an environment where you know um your grandparents lived in this small town right and this is just an example but i'm, I'm feeling it very strongly grandparents lived in, in in this small town um gave birth to mom and dad mom and dad met and also stayed in that small town 
uh, you were born, you also stayed in that small town, and then you you start to sense this, um, you, you you feel this overwhelming sense of like there isn't enough here for me. I'm a big fish in a small sea. I need to develop to the best of my capabilities, and this there isn't enough here for me. And then I'm also sensing as well, you know, if you're in that situation. You're in a very good place because now you have new energy, exploration, okay? Doing something different, not knowing the destination, but knowing that I'm leaving the past behind because it's not enough for me, okay? And then I'm also sensing for some of you being in a situation where you've had to help out parents, okay? It's almost like ancestral karma, right? Um, and here's what I'm sensing. Oh, Capricorns. So here's what I'm sensing. It's like <clears throat> mom and dad might not have made the best choices. We all make choices based on what we're given, based on our environment, based on our education level, based on our own sense of awareness. So this is not to knock the decisions that other, other people make. But I also feel like, you know, they, they might have been in a situation where um, it was survival. Okay, so they did the minimum, the bareness, like, like taking care of the bare necessities. And so growing up, you felt like you lacked that guidance, you lacked that mentorship, you lacked that, uh, um, you lack somebody holding your hand and telling you, you know, hey, don't do that, you should do this instead, because this is going to get you where you need to be, okay? And I'm seeing, you know, people like, um, whose parents were, for example, whose parents were college educated, you know, um, they can walk th their children through the college process. So for example, you have to take the ACT, you have to take the SATs, you have to do that by your junior year so that by your senior year, you have to load up on all these uh, college prep classes so that colleges will look more favorably upon you and you have to do extracurricular activities. You should also enroll in, you know, extracurricular activities outside of class. So like that guidance, I feel like some people, some of you guys, didn't have that. And by the sweat of your brows, the calluses on your fingers, you've had to go about it on your own. You didn't have the guidance. You didn't have the, um, the hand-holding. And so you, you, know, you were in survival mode. You fought your way and you, you've, you've had to do it on your own. And I feel like along the way, it's made you really strong, but I feel it might have um, made you a little bit callous, okay? Kind of like, oh, well, I did this, you know, so everyone needs to be able to do it too, right? And so I'm sensing here, there's a sense of like a paradigm shift, okay? The people that have the privilege either through parents through proper guidance or through the sweat of their brows whoever makes it up first to the top of the mountain is obligated no matter how they got there whoever makes it there first is obligated to give advice give guidance to others here's how you do it and here's what i did and here's what i did that worked here's what i did that failed okay so i feel like it doesn't matter how you got there whoever gets there first needs to kind of like pay it forward by giving other people, you know, like um, the lay of the land, pretty much telling people what they should do. So I'm sensing here um, a big spiritual karmic energy. It could be ancestral karma that needs to be broken. It could also be, you know, a, a paradigm shift where we're not doing what we did before. We're opting for a new path, a new way of doing because what we did before, it worked for us, but it also made us a little bit calloused. And we don't want that, okay? And then I'm also sensing, we have this tremendous sense of like, breath of fresh air, you know? His hair is blowing in the wind, he's a leader. There's a whole caravan of people following his lead because they trust him. And so you're thrust in this position where you're going to be exalted. You're in a position where people trust you. They value your, and you know, he's, um, he's, le he's leading them. He's leading the whole, you know, Oregon Trail, whatever you call it. He's, he's leaving, he's leading the whole exodus into this new land, right? 
but look at the way he's dressed he's not like a king he's not a ruler he's not a tyrant he's not like an emperor he's dressed like the regular lay person and there's a sense of humility associated with it okay it's like being one with the people in order for them to accept you and you know this is not about proving anything to anybody this is just like living a very very humble life knowing your roots knowing where you come from knowing those struggles of other people so that you can adequately lead them in the right direction so i feel like there's a shepherd energy about you guys for this month of october and i feel that you are going to be tremendously successful for many of you who are changing a career path who are going in a different direction I feel for many of you there was a situation where I feel like there's like social or family expectations they wanted you to do something and that's not your thing you're turning your back and you're walking your own path and you're going to be amazingly happy and then I'm also sensing as well um, you know there there definitely is a relationship here that needs to be kind of like laid to rest okay too much has been said and I, I definitely feel maybe it's the other party. Um, I, I don't want to work on this anymore. I'm not going to go, you know, downstream to fetch the water to fill those cups. Okay. Or I'm not going to up the, go up the mountain to that crystal spring to fill the chalices. I'm, I'm just not going to do that. And so everyone has their own free will and we, we can't really, you know, infringe upon other people's free will. If that's their decision, if they've already made it clear, I feel like you have to kind of like live in the moment and just just realize that in the past they made these promises but now they're reneging on the, the promises and you just have to kind of like accept it at, at face value um that's what i'm sensing here for you okay so capricorns i'm so glad to get a whole uh in touch with you again and i hope you guys are doing well the saturn experience you are in the thick of it and I feel like a lot of it has to do with releasing okay so Saturn is a karmic teacher it taught us well it has taught you guys but it, it's supposed to teach us during the the Saturn transit it's supposed to teach us areas that we need to grow in areas that we need to mature in and it it's also like a situation where responsibilities seem like they're piling on top of you right financial drains for some of you responsibilities and um, we have to be strategic about who we give our time and resources and energies to because ultimately Saturn teaches us that we are it teaches us our limitations it teaches us that we are only humans it teaches us that you know no matter what position we're in we're made of flesh and blood we can't stretch ourselves too thin we can't pretend like we're God we have to you know get back to our roots get back to ourselves and operate from that space of humility okay because it restricts right it it it, it breaks us down to our pure human essence to realize that you know, I might have the fancy car and the marble mansion, but deep down I'm still human. If I drive that car too fast and I crash into a tree, I'm going to die, right? And then it also teaches us too that, you know, I might have like $5 in the bank and I might have like, you know, a decrepit home, but deep down I'm human. I still have my dignity, so I'm going to walk with my head up high. So it, it breaks down these false, th these false, paradigms that we have these false ideas that we have they could be self-limiting ideas they have like they, they could even be like you know that sense of um grandi grandiose sense of self but it breaks it down so that you can figure out you know i'm here how can i be of service to other people and this is by the way a very very good time for many of you to do community service to understand how you can kind of like reconnect with your fellow human beings in a spirit of service. Um, I think like it's a really good time to do that. You know, really make the time, okay? Make it a family event if you have children. Make it uh, a bonding experience if you have a spouse, okay? It's going to be good for you and it's going to really um, heighten your sense of appreciation for what others have to go through okay so I, I just feel like you know um, community service is always a good way to give back 
but it also allows you to take a peek into um, someone else's life, someone who might be really struggling, and to understand that you know it is our responsibility uh, to do whatever we can to alleviate the difficulties and the suffering for another human being. And I feel like that's what's coming in here. It is about karma. It's about karma coming full circle, taking and then receiving, okay? Being taken from and then having it come back to you. So not all is lost. This is a really powerful month. And so I want you to make the best of it, okay? So once again, um, I'm no longer giving private readings. If you are interested in a private reading, there is a um, colleague of mine. Her name is Bridget. I've included her information below. If you'd like to book a reading with her, she is phenomenal. And I can't stress that enough. I wish you all the best, okay? And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care of yourself and have a wonderful rest of September and October 2019. Bye-bye.